Hey there, I'm Felicia from Compass Land USA, your go-to resource for great deals on rural and vacant land. Today we're going to look into the steps you need to take to find out if your property is in a flood zone. So how do you find out what flood zone you're in? You can find out what flood zone you're in by using a couple very simple steps. You can go to the FEMA map service website, free to use, enter your address or the address of you, the land you are looking to buy into the search bar and click search. And then you'll view your results on a very nice color coded map. You can use the legend at the bottom of the map to determine which color corresponds to which flood zone. And it should also be labeled right there on the map for you. Keep in mind that flood zone maps are periodically updated. So it's a good idea to check this website regularly to ensure you have the most up-to-date information. If you've gone through those steps and you've determined that your property, your land is in a high risk flood zone or an area with a high risk of flooding, you may be required to carry flood insurance. Flood insurance is a separate policy that can cover buildings, homes, and the contents within that building. Per FEMA, the average annual flood insurance policy premium is around $700. That's a fairly low annual cost to protect you from flood damages. Just one inch of flood water can cause up to $25,000 in damages. So $700 seems like a pretty good trade-off to me. You can purchase flood insurance through your existing agents, your existing agent or broker, um, and if you need help finding a provider, you can go to floodsmart.gov. I'll put the website in the description for you. That's floodsmart.gov. There's also the National Flood Insurance Program. This is a federal program that offers flood insurance to homeowners, renters, business owners in a set of participating communities. You could also try a private insurance company or get your flood insurance through a state-run program. Once you've chosen a provider, you need to decide between a standard policy and a preferred risk policy. A standard policy, again, will cover buildings and contents, while a preferred risk policy covers either building or contents. That's not an and. It's either the building or its contents. So it's totally up to you which one you want to go with. So then once you pick your policy coverage amount, you need to pay the premium to kickstart that flood insurance. Uh, keep in mind, those are typically paid on an annual basis. So having gone through all that, you can see flood zones can potentially affect the value of your land purchase and the feasibility of building on that land. If a piece of land is located in a high risk flood zone, it might be more difficult to get bank financing to purchase the property and might be more expensive to insure, or it might not be. You have to do your research. In addition to financial considerations, flood zones can also impact the use and development of the land. In high-risk flood zones, there may be stricter building codes and floodplain management regulations in place to reduce the risk of damage from flooding. These regulations may limit the type of structures that can be built on the land or require that structures be built to a certain elevation to reduce the risk of flood damage. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment in the description below and we'll do our best to answer as quickly as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That way you're the very first to know when a new property tour video is published. Thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you soon.